Hello, everyone. I'm Sean. This is Hoon. We are the Courageous Frights back once again for your gaming news. So mm -hmm. I'll start with my topics. So a lot of these I know you have as well. So you can yeah. add some info if you have any. Uh, so we had another Switch Pro scare this past week. Oh, yeah. Where what is it? Nintendo took out a patent on uh, not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, I know. I it was that. like NSW or something. It was like, what? Yeah. Because <laughs> they said that's the official abbreviation that everyone, everyone uses for the Switch. Yeah. Because I talk about the Switch. I, always, I know I always talk about the NSW. That's my... Yeah, <laughs> my favorite system, NSW. Yeah, so I guess this is something like how Nintendo decided to make the official abbreviation for GameCube the GCN. Yeah, because everyone calls it the GameCube Nintendo. Yes. So anyway, they put a patent out on that, and everybody just assumed this was the Switch Pro. And then, like two days later, they announced the Splatoon Three Switch OLED. And everyone's hopes and dreams were crushed again. Yes, Nintendo's always crushing people's hopes and dreams all the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're known for that. It's what they do. But then you said there was another thing, like some other rumor. Yeah, there was another rumor that, like, it was a different leaker. He said that because they had that one that came out about the uh, the Splatoon thing. But then he was like, "There's like another thing coming about." Uh, September is supposed to be released or something like that because I guess what they did was Nintendo was privating some of their older Switch advertisements. Yeah. And what happened is before the Switch OLED came out they did that. Then they released something about the Switch OLED. Mm -hmm. This time he was saying that they're doing it again. They're doing this kind of like the history repeating itself type of thing. Yeah. They're doing that again. So they were speculating with uh, with the Switch OLED and stuff like that. They might be bringing that out. But he said he had some insider information, but everyone has insider information, apparently. <laughs> right. We have lots of insider information yeah. about Silent Hill every week. Yeah, about Silent Hill, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> making Silent Hill. Every yes. studio in existence. Although that's looking a little more likely these days. Yeah, that, sound, that actually sounds more like truthful than <laughs> yeah. the Switch Pro coming out, but he said he has some inside information about September is supposed to have mm, okay. the Switch Pro. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So, and then uh, we had some startling news this past week here in Japan. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the Yu-Gi-Oh! creator, mm -hmm. who I guess his body was found, and that's how they know he's oh, okay. dead. Uh, I guess he died. It sounded like it was an accident. I guess he died, and then they found his body like three days later or something. Oh, okay. And then um, also, I'm sure all the pretty much everybody knows this, but uh, Shinzo Abe, who is the previous, well, I guess two previous prime ministers ago, was assassinated on Friday mm -hmm. in uh, Nara when he was giving a speech. And according to the internet, at least for a while, Hideo Kojima was trending on Twitter because somebody somewhere believed he was the assassin. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like what? I guess the reasoning is that he looked sort of like the guy who did it, but not really. It's like he had like the same glasses, and I was like, yeah. "Wow, <laughs> it's like reverse Superman syndrome." Yeah, I was like, "What are you talking about? That looks nothing like him, with, except his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> the glasses are the only way you could tell." <laughs> but yeah, I guess this started as a joke on 4chan. Oh yeah, of course. And then some right-wing French dude, some French politician, took it and ran with it on Twitter, tweeted it like it was true, because I guess he believed it was true. Yeah. And then some Greek media outlet called Anti-News, ironically enough, yeah. <laughs> decided to run a news article on it, like a video and stuff. I don't know if it was aired on Greek television or if this was just like on their online news service or whatever i'm not sure how uh what the standing is for anti-news in greece yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so they were running it like it was a real story because i guess they believed it was 
So then Hideo there's Kojima. Hideo Kojima assassinated Shinzo Abe, and that was a whole yeah. thing. They kept showing pictures of him standing around with like the the Russian hat. That oh yeah, I think I saw that. that's like the thing that keeps showing next to the Che Guevara picture or whatever, saying it's that like, he's like a staunch communist and that's why he assassinated Abe. Yes, it was ridiculous. Like it was pretty funny, but there were a lot of funny takes on Twitter about it. Yeah, somebody somebody used the reaction of uh, Idris Elba when he was on that whatever that show is that makes you eat hot wings or whatever. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it was like Hideo Kojima's reaction when he finds out he's trending on Twitter after coming out of the Minions movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like everybody's like, he killed the Prime Minister, and really he's probably watching Minions or some nonsense, knowing Kojima. Yeah, probably. <laughs> watching some movie. Probably with Norman Reedus right next to him. Right. Him, Norman Reedus, and uh, Mads Mikkelsen all went on a date together to go see. Yes, <laughs> they had some of that Japanese popcorn. Yeah, we'll talk about. Yes, well, I had, they had I had nachos when I went to see Thor: Love and Thunder. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was nachos. Yeah, it's hard to screw up nachos. I guess. <laughs> Although our local theater back home does. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's like lumpy stuff in the sauce. Yes, yeah, the that Jeez, moves has sometimes. Some lumps in it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so anyway, moving on from the the living cheese. Yes. Uh, Super Mario RPG, which is something we are staunch supporters of. Yes, that's a good game. Yes. Uh, apparently, it got a fan made remake from a guy named Finn. I don't know if this is Finn Wolfhard in disguise or if this yes. is another Finn. <laughs> Could be. Who knows? But anyway, Finn has decided to reveal the footage that he's been working on for his fan-made Super Mario RPG, and by doing so, is most likely inviting a cease and desist order from Nintendo. Yeah. But... <laughs> They're inviting their private investigators to investigate him. <laughs> yeah. But he is claiming that he doesn't plan on making it available to play. It's like his own like personal passion project that he's working on for himself, I guess. That's and, weird. It's like, let me make this game for and myself. Then nobody else can touch it. And then yes. he can play it to his heart's content when he's in his cell at the Nintendo Vault. Yeah, exactly. Next to Bowser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or whatever that other guy's name is. Yeah. But it does look really cool. I'll give it that. Like, it, mm. it looks great. It's basically just a remake of Mario RPG from what we can tell. Mm. But one of the cool... He, he definitely upped the textures made the environment look a lot more realistic and uh, Mallow is following Mario around on the over map. So, which is interesting because more RPG, the characters don't follow you around unless there's like, they appear for a conversation or something. Yeah. It's just Mario. So some RPGs do that and some have like the whole party following you around and like a big line. Yeah, I think a lot of the, the JRPGs do that. Yeah, time. Mario RPG didn't, but a lot of other ones do. So he decided to do that. For some reason Mallow's like OP. The oh, like Mallow character, I guess, because Mallow had way more attack damage than Mario, which I was like, that never happened. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because Mallow's like a mage. <laughs> Mallow's super weak. Yeah, he he cries. He falls over and cries. Yeah, he falls over and cries all the time. So. Look at that yeah. crybaby power. Right. And then uh, next topic, I guess. So Robocop Rogue City was announced as being made mm -hmm. by Nacon and Taeyon or something. Yeah. It sounds like uh, members of a K-pop band or something. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> I guess the Nacon at least I, I think is a French studio. Isn't Nacon like earbuds? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's Raycon. <laughs> <laughs> like they talk about it's always people well, want no, it, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Nacon, Earbugs, and Taeyon definitely sounds like somebody from a K-pop group. Yeah. But um, yeah, so they're making Robocop Rogue City, which got a trailer. Looks mm -hmm. like a first person shooter type thing with uh some story elements and side quests and stuff. And they uh shoot people in the crotch. Hopefully. If it's movie accurate, you can. Yes. 
it's like probably it's like you have to control it to make sure you can shoot them in the crowd. Yeah. So it doesn't look bad at all. In fact, I'd buy that for a dollar. Yes. <laughs> but uh, they're also well, yeah, Peter Weller is back as Robocop as well. So they oh, did manage good. to get his likeness and voice. That's good. And then they're also working on an untitled Terminator survival project, which is way off. Like it's mm-hmm. not, uh, that's not coming out anytime soon. So the Robocop Rogue City thing has got a June 2023 release date. So next June, not this one, but next mm-hmm. year. And then who knows when the Terminator thing's coming out, but it's a survival game. So I'm guessing maybe something like Alien Isolation or something. It'll literally yeah. be that that uh, meme image of the anime girl hiding under the desk with the Terminator walking around. Oh, uh, there you go, yes. <laughs> That'll be what it is. <laughs> there you go. So, that could be interesting, though, because that, that does happen in the Terminator movies. Yeah. Like Sarah Connor hiding in the police station and like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, it'll be interesting to see what that happens. Do you think someday... Nay, if these are successful, Taeon and Nacon will continue their partnership and give us Robocop versus Terminator. Yeah, they probably should. I think I see if, if they both do well, they probably will. Robocop okay. versus Terminator because we haven't had one of those since like the Super Nintendo. Yes, and maybe they'll do a remake of it. <laughs> they have the license to both, apparently. Yeah, I guess it's surprising. I guess they made a Rambo game in the past too. So, which I guess that wasn't very good, but hopefully they're improving. Yes. And then the the last thing I had was the the obligatory Switch Online update. So we're getting Pokemon Puzzle League for the N64 this week. Oh, that's a pretty good game, so. Yeah, I forgot it existed, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is Pokemon Puzzle League? I mean, obviously it's a puzzle game, but. So, yeah, I've heard it is good, so I'll have to check it out. Mm-hmm. And that's everything I had for gaming news, so... All right. I guess I could take over from here. So the first thing I have here, I know we talked about, like, PS3 emulation and stuff like that. I guess Sony has brought out a job advertisement for a software development engineer position that works on tools and technology team at PlayStation Studios to support the newly relaunched classics for PS4 and PS5. Classics games via, run via emulation of legacy PlayStation platforms. So, I guess they're a little bit, they're getting a little bit more uh, serious in this type of thing, which I guess we kind of speculate that anyways, because yeah. they have the PlayStation now. They probably need to put stuff onto the PlayStation Now service or whatever. Or that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if they did that. But I guess they're saying PS3 is having some, like that one. The streaming for PS3 is not the greatest. So and maybe that would be a way to try to fix it. Or maybe even try to find a way to make it where you can actually play your games on the PS3 or PS5. Yeah, because I think they had problems with backwards compatibility for PS4 to PS3, I think. Yeah, I, I think they had that issue too. And I remember when they did that, talked about the development of the PS5. That was one of the things they said is like, there's like cells or something in the actual processor that they can actually, like, emulate the PS3. And they specifically said PS3 because of how hard the PS3 is actually to emulate because of the way the, the cell processor works, the pr- cell processor is yeah. designed. So I guess we'll see. I'm, I guess hopefully they hopefully get a little bit more involved in, like, emulation and stuff they like that. They actually try. Yeah, actually try. <laughs> that would be great. But Sony is always known to not be the best with uh, their third, like their retro gaming and stuff like that, So, which is well, kind of weird. The fact they call PS4 games classics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of an indication. Them classics. <laughs> this classic PS4 game. Classic games. game from two years ago. <laughs> Playing Spider-Man again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spider-Man. Classic there. Spider-Man. Like, that was in, like, last year or something. They gotta remaster it again. Yes. Pretty much. So the next thing I have here is uh, Pokemon. Apparently, uh, I think we talked about this before about Pokemon cards having a shortage. Yeah. Is like 
they've had a lot of scalping issues and stuff like that. Apparently, uh, they are printing like nine billion Pokemon cards to actually combat that shortage. Now, they should have probably done that a couple of years ago, like a year ago. Yeah, when there actually was a shortage. But I guess they are starting to build more, like actually bring out more, like the older sets, plus putting printing out like a lot more cards. The only problem with that is it's like you're diluting the uh, the amount that's out there, so the prices for them are going to like plummet because you have more cards out. But right, yeah, because it's just going to basically kill the collector market at this yeah. point. Because you can get them like pretty much get them all the time. So, which actually there hasn't been a really big a big issue because I, I I collect Pokemon cards. Like I don't I don't buy them as much as I used to, but like there there has like pretty much a steady supply of them now. It's not like you don't see them anymore, but they do have a pretty steady supply of them now. So, right. I don't think people are buying them as much as they used to either. So, so the next thing I have here is uh. Apparently, Lollipop Chains- Chainsaw, apparently it's being a remake, has been announced for 2023. And it doesn't have James Gunn or Suda51, which are the original co-creators of Lollipop Chainsaw. Mm-hmm. They're not involved in the new new remake at all. That's they always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Suda51, because they were like the big, big people that made it. Yeah. Which is kind of weird they would remake this game of all, because Lollipop Chainsaw didn't do too well. When it came out, <laughs> well, I don't think any game that Suda Fifty One makes. T- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess No More Heroes, maybe. Yeah, No More Heroes, I think, is the only one that's really the big one. But it is really strange. It's this game of all games. Why? <laughs> I know this had a big, a lot of controversy when it came out because you know the, the character design. <laughs> yeah. And the way the game is, like, it's very violent. It's a very violent game, which kind of makes sense. I didn't realize James Gunn was <laughs> a co-creator for it. Yeah, so. I didn't know that either until recently. I'm not sure how much involvement he had, but yeah. I think he actually had, like, the story. He actually wrote the story. Okay. Yeah, that was like, he was, like, a main main person who wrote the story for it. That's going to be, like, one of the earlier filmmaker video game collaborations. It's like a Kojima type thing. Yeah. And this was I think before James Gunn was like with Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's like right before Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like Yeah, so this is more ago. like probably when he was still with trauma, that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like no well, wonder why, because it's very violent. Apparently this this game was very violent. So well yeah this came out in 2012. So this is probably his project right before he started work on Guardians. Probably. <laughs> and then um yeah, I don't think Tara Strong is involved either, and she was the voice of the lead character in Lollipop Chainsaw. Yeah, they probably changed that too. Yeah, they probably couldn't get anyone back, or they probably didn't want to get anyone back. <laughs> yeah. But I guess we'll see. I mean, I didn't see too many people hammering for a Lollipop Chainsaw remake, but <laughs> but who knows? Somebody, they, they, somebody out there thought it should be. Yeah, it should be remade. At this time, <laughs> it's Dragami Games apparently is making it. Dragami Games, which is the great. successor to Katakawa Games, which I didn't know Katakawa had a gaming division. <laughs> I know it was a movie studio, unless it's a different Katakawa. It probably is the same same one it's or something. Like Sony or something. It's like the the poor man Sony, where it's a yeah. movie studio and a gaming studio, but both are bankrupt. Pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. The next thing I have here is a obscure PlayStation 1 game. Ikana Kagua can finally play it in English. Apparently they're patching the game. Which instead of having a Japanese translation, they're actually putting an English translation. It's supposed to be available on 11th of July, which according to this recording would be tomorrow. Yeah. So that's happening. (laughs) Okay. We got these too many people be looking to find play a Kanakawa, which apparently is a game about like you know like a like a a plane crash and you're a survivor of that plane crash type of thing. So okay, for a PS, it's supposed to be kind of like Lost or something. That could be interesting for PS One. That's different. Yeah, it, this article is weird because it says PS One, but then it, later on it says it's PS Two. <laughs> it's PS One point so. five. 
maybe it was one of those games where it's like they probably it probably released for both systems type of thing. Could be. Maybe it was like on the cusp of the front of the the new system or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, one of those things where it's probably on the cusp, so it kind of like was able to come out for both, but either but way, it's different. Very different type of game. So. Yeah, and I always like I always like when they actually like do old games and like remake them again, especially with like stuff you don't have the translations for. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay. Cause some of these can be classics. It's just, you never played them because it's like, it's not in English or whatever. Right. So, it's or like they didn't come out live or whatever. Yeah. Live alive, which that's coming out later on this month. So yeah. Like two weeks or something. Yeah. Which that's always good with, I was like, I said, we always talk about gaming preservation. So that's always a good thing when that happens. Yep. And last thing we have here is uh, Bethesda. Apparently, uh, there's some fans like modders that created Fallout London, which is kind of like a gigantic, almost like an expansion to Fallout 4. Apparently, Bethesda saw their their work and they've been hiring like the people that made that <laughs> mod, which kind of makes sense because I, I heard this thing was really good. Like, it's actually Fallout London is actually really good. So that's good. At least it's good news that modders are actually getting jobs for the work they've been doing. Because a lot of yeah. times people do mods and they don't get money for them because they're just doing it because they're because they want to do it. They just get cease and desist letters. Yeah, they get cease and desist letters from Nintendo. So. <laughs> but it's kind of it's, it is kind of interesting. That's one thing that people like Fallout in particular. At least some people want is instead of being in the U.S be outside of the US, like either be in China, because that's that's the other part of Fallout, because it's a war between the US and China. Mm-hmm. And they were launching nuclear bombs everywhere and you have a nuclear apocalypse basically. Yeah. So some people want to have like be set in another another place other than like the US. Yeah. Which makes sense. Be like London, like Europe to see how the Euro- Europeans have it or even be in China. But the only problem with being in China you probably wouldn't be able to sell it in China <laughs> because right. the Chinese government would be like, what is this type of thing? So I kind of wanted I kind of wanted to be the next Fallout game to be outside of the US just to see what just to see what the world looks like outside of it in the US. So Yeah, that would be interesting. Be an interesting story at least. But but who knows? And that was actually my last story I have for this one. Okay, so that's going to do it for this week of Courageous Frights Gaming News. So if you like what you heard, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. And you too could feel the strength welling within. See ya. See ya.